Okay, welcome everyone to uh, the discussion for plan amendment case NPA 2020-0019.01, 1103 West 24th Street. Um, if you'd like to share your name with the rest of our attendees, uh, please feel free to do so in the Q&A chat box to the right of your screen. And before we get on to the presentations, uh, let's meet tonight's staff and presenters uh, for this virtual meeting. Uh, my name is Jesse Gutierrez and I'm with Planning and Zoning. And then next is uh, Rachel. <laughs> we are on Rachel's screen. Rachel might be muted. Uh, how about Jeff? Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Angstrom. I'll be running things behind the scenes. And Mark. Good evening, I'm Mark Walters and I'll be uh, moderating the Q&A at the end of the presentations. And Leah. Sorry, I went to Rachel. Oh, <laughs> hi, Rachel. Oh, she's muted. Hi, everyone. Uh, Rachel Tepper with Long Range Planning, and I'm um, here to kind of assist on the back end with the technical support. Okay. Actually, go to Maureen. Hi, I'm Maureen Meredith, Long Range Planning, Planning and Zoning. I am the Plan Amendment Planner and I'll be presenting the case uh, in the staff presentation. Leah? Oh. Hi, I'm Leah Bojo with Drenner Group here representing the applicant. Robin, want to introduce Hi. yourself? I would love to. I'm Robin Lerner. I'm sorry it's a little dark here. I am the applicant. I'm the president and CEO of the Texas International Education Consortium, located at 1103 West 24th Street. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, if you're joining us online, uh, you'll notice that there's a Q&A box on the right hand side of your screen uh, titled Live Event Q&A. And this is how you will interact with tonight's presenters and ask questions. Uh, feel free to send the questions throughout the presentation. Uh, next slide. And if you're joining us online and would appreciate to follow along using closed captions, uh, you're able to do so in the lower right hand side of your screen you'll see a small gear, small icon. If you click on that, then you go to captions and settings. You should be able to choose from a list of available languages. And for those of you joining by phone, uh, we will open up uh, the lines for questions and comments uh, once the presentations are done. And with that, Maureen will begin. Okay, so, um, as I said, I am the plan amendment planner for this case. And as you know, this property is, is within the Central Austin Combined Neighborhood Planning Area. As Jesse said, the case number is NPA 2020-0019.01. Um, Mark Graham is the zoning case manager and here is his contact information if you don't have it already. Next slide. So here's the basic agenda. Um, I will go over a little bit more information on the case, on the case, um, other than what I just stated previously. I'll go over some ground rules, um, how to participate in the process, why there is a plan amendment application, what is a future land use map. Then we will go into the applicant's presentation, and then we will go into questions and answers. 
So as I said, this is within the Central Austin Combined Neighborhood Planning Area in the West University District. The property address is 1103 West 24th Street. It's 0 0.69 acres. There's the case number again, NPA 2020-0019.01. The request is to change the future land use map from office to mixed use. This is the associated zoning case number C14 2020-0026. The request is to change the zoning from general office conditional overlay neighborhood plan to community commercial mixed use VMU neighborhood plan. The property owner is the Texas International Education Consortium. The agent is Leah Bojo from Drenner, Drenner Group, and she will be doing the presentation at the end of the staff presentation. So here's some basic ground rules. As you know, with COVID-19, we have social distance, distancing. So in-person questions and comments have been moved to this online chat through this live event. You will not be able to speak during this meeting unless you have called in. But, it, but you can ask questions and make comments using the chat function. If you've called in, you'll need to unmute yourself in order to ask questions. Uh, there will be no threats, personal attacks, profanity, racial epithets, or slurs during this virtual chat, and it will not be published by staff. So staff reserves the right to remove any offenders from the meeting. All questions will be answered in the order they are received, and similar questions may be grouped and answered together. So how to participate in this process. All questions will be answered and made available by request within five business days on the website. That is, if you think of a question after the end of this meeting, you can always email us and we'll get back to you. You can email or call the case manager with any questions or comments. Any written comments that you would like added to our case reports will be added as they're presented to Planning Commission and City Council. If you live within 500 feet of the property when the cases are scheduled for Planning Commission and City Council, you will receive a notice in the mail um, explaining how you can participate in the virtual public hearings. So why is there a plan amendment application? So neighborhood plans are adopted by City Council and they are amendments to the Imagine Austin Comprehensive Plan. The City Charter requires that zoning changes be consistent with the Comprehensive Plan. Most neighborhood plan amendments are amendments to the future land use map and most plan amendment applications have an associated zoning application. So this map shows in blue the areas that have city council approved neighborhood plans, most of which have a future land use map. Next slide. So this is the land use map for the Central Austin Combined Neighborhood Planning Area. So the colors on the future land use map represent broad land uses. For example, the yellow that you see on the map represents single family, Red represents commercial. Brown represents mixed use. Orange represents multifamily. And purple represents industrial. So we have a chart that shows what zoning districts are considered consistent with each of those land use categories. For example, SF3 would be consistent with single family land use. Multifamily 1 would be considered consistent with the multifamily, etc. Next slide. So when someone submits a zoning change application, as in this case here, when the proposed zoning triggers a change in the land use, not only does it trigger a zoning case, it triggers a plan amendment application. So this property has um, office land use and it will, the proposed land use would be mixed use. So here's the property on the south side of West 24th Street. Next slide. 
So this is the map that shows pink representing office land use. The orange to the west and to the east rather represents multifamily. To the north uh, is brown, which is mixed use. And to the west is pink, which is office. Next slide. So this is the zoning map. Again, it shows uh, zoning to the north is multifamily four. East multifamily six, it looks like with the conditional overlay. South multifamily. Uh, west is general office and the property, as you see, is zone general office with a conditional overlay. And I believe Leah will go into more details about the conditional overlay. This map shows the Imagine Austin growth concept map where the property sits within that. It is within the downtown activity center and you can see to the west is North is North Lamar Boulevard, which is an activity corridor. So that ends my presentation and next we will go into the applicant's presentation. Hello, uh, this is Leah again. Um, I am going to talk a little bit here about both the, the future land use amendment which is what we're here specifically for this meeting to talk about, but then also, uh, as Maureen said, I'll talk a little bit about the zoning case that goes along with it, so, so everyone has a full understanding of what we're proposing. Next slide. Um, so here is a sort of a, a zoomed out picture so, we, so everyone can um, orient themselves. We're on the south side of 24th Street uh, between Lamar and Guadalupe. Next slide, please. Uh, and then this is similar, obviously, to the picture that Maureen showed, showing that we're on the southwest corner of uh, Leon and West 24th Street. Next slide. Um, I thought this was a helpful picture. This is this is a picture if you were standing on the north side of 24th Street and looking to the south. Um, and so our site is the one on the right on the far side of 24th Street with that white building on it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here we have a zoning map again, similar to I think to what Maureen showed, showing that we are currently zoned um, GOCONP, um, surrounded by a lot of multifamily and some other commercial uh, sites nearby. Next slide, please. Um, so that current conditional overlay that's on the site today uh, limits the height to 35 feet. Uh, it prohibits um, group residential, as well as club or lodge and community recreation private. Next slide. Uh, and then here we have a picture of the future land use map um, today, which is currently because our site is zoned uh, just for general office, the, the current future land use map shows it just as office. We're proposing uh, to change it to mixed use. Next slide, please. Um, here we have um, sort of a little bit of an overview of the current of the current site and the current situation, which is, as Maureen said, it's just under 0.7 acres. Um, what is built on the building today, on the site today, um, is what's called a legal non-conforming use, which means that it was built to code when it was built in 1962, um, but it no longer complies with code, which means that when the site is redeveloped, um, if it keeps the zoning that it has right now, it would not be able to rebuild to the same um, standards, same site standards that it was built to uh, when it was built in 62. Um, and then I would also point out, and I think Robin will talk about this also, um, but that the, the building is in need of significant repair, which is a, a big part of why we're here. Um, the building can't be rebuilt to its current size under the existing zoning, um, and it, it cannot be continued to be used in its current state. Next slide, please. Uh, so now I'll hand it over to Robin Lerner, um, the executive director and president, and I'll let her tell you a little bit about um, the Texas International Education Consortium. Sorry, y'all, I was still on mute. Um, okay, great. Well, thanks everybody for, for taking the time to listen to our case. Um, so uh, I appreciate people making an investment in their community by joining calls like this, and I welcome this chance to get to know our neighbors. So as Leah said, I'm Robin Lerner, and I have been the president and CEO of Tyke for the past three years. And for today's meeting, my goal is for you to leave with an understanding of who Tyke is, 
what we do as an organization, how we use our physical structure, the limitations of that physical structure, what we hope to do with it, and how and why that is integral to the future of our organization. And then I would be happy to engage in a discussion with all of you. Next slide, please. Um, when Tyke was created uh, in about 1985, we were envisioned to be a nimble nonprofit partner to Texas universities and a catalyst for international partnerships. And we are unlike any other organization in Austin and even in Texas. Our mission is to create lasting relationships between Texas higher education and counterparts around the world. Our goal is to tangibly increase the internationalization of Texas higher education year on year. And we do that by facilitating deep and lasting partnerships between Texas universities and their counterparts globally, engaging Texas participation in international development projects, and involving Texas faculty and staff in meaningful educational capacity building projects around the world. Next slide, please. Uh, since Tyke's inception, we have kept the lights on by hosting international students, educators, and special groups and by conducting international capacity building projects. Historically, we have hosted students seeking an academically focused intensive English program who would ultimately matriculate at a Texas university for their studies. Over our history, we have taught some 30,000 students in our building and hosted countless international professional groups. Um, as we know that teachers are the linchpin to preparing young people around the world to study with us and our member universities, we also host teachers of English seeking to increase their effectiveness and to build a network here in Austin and in Texas. We recruit faculty from across our universities to help universities in other countries increase their capacity and educate more effectively. Now, the revenue from our international students and our capacity building projects um, has allowed us to explore international partnerships on behalf of our universities and offer services for free with the goal to keep even the most cash-strapped international office engaged in internationalization. Finding housing for our participants has become one of the costliest parts of our programming. And part of our desire to rezone and redevelop is to host our own visitors here at our building. Next slide. Okay, our building. Our building is Tyke and our Tyke is our building um, as 1103 West 24th has always been the headquarters of Tyke. A former dorm, it was retrofitted into classrooms and offices to host up to about 150 students at a time, plus a rather large staff. Its conference rooms have hosted our university members from all across the state and held college fairs for our international students. Its size has allowed us to share space with other internationally focused nonprofits like World Affairs Council of Austin and Global Austin. We allow groups like the Friends of Korea to host meetings in our space. And before COVID, we opened our doors to international nonprofits across Texas to come together and network through special events and mixers. In addition to our students and exchange visitors, Global Austin and WACA use our building frequently to host international exchange visitors, international business people, and dignitaries. Our proximity to UT, as you can imagine, is a major draw for our visitors and our students, and we cannot imagine existing anywhere else. Next slide. Um, the challenges. Unfortunately, it now seems like our building may be the end of us. As I look at our building today, I see a physical structure in decline and disrepair. I see the very real potential to become a hub for international organizations, visitors, and convenings, but our building turns people away rather than inviting them in. I see a building far too large to maintain alone, but too crumbling to invest in. And radical changes in the international education sector, which have been exacerbated by COVID-19, mean we are faced with a building that is too large to effectively use ourselves and too costly to repair to invite in others. So this leaves me feeling very alone with no options and the future of Tyke wrapped up in the direction we go with our building. Next slide. Our vision. With property impossible to afford anywhere in our neighborhood, we want to stay at 1103 West 24th, but we need help to redevelop our building so that we can stay. As a small staff currently of 12 and less constant in-person groups than in years past, we need much less space for our daily operations than we used to. As such, we are seeking minimal new zoning, just enough to allow us to attract a partner to redevelop the land with a more modern, safe and appropriate physical space. With a partner, we can realize our vision to have a flexible space that we can afford and where we can convene international groups and visitors to have a neighborhood conference and engagement space, 
to have a more beautiful building and to keep internationalization strong in West Campus. Without new zoning, Tech will likely be forced to sell and move out. We simply can't afford to repair our building and the current limitations pre prevent co-development as is, as Leah mentioned. So we'd like to remove the eyesore and prevent, provide something unique and valuable to our neighborhood. We'd like you to be on board and we're open to hearing your concerns and doing the best we can to accommodate them going forward. And I'd be very happy to discuss this further. Thank you so much. So um, thank you, Robin. Um, so just to sort of summarize here, the whole, the whole of the two cases, our current zoning uh, is general office conditional overlay neighborhood plan and our current future land use map designation is office. We are requesting um, community commercial mixed use, vertical mixed use overlay neighborhood plan, and we are requesting a future land use map designation of mixed use. Next slide, please. Um, I thought this might be helpful in giving um, an approximation of the difference um, between, like I said, what our current building is, which is a legally non-conforming structure, um, what our current entitlements give us, GOCONP, and then what we are requesting um, through GRMU VNP. Next slide, please. Actually, on this slide, if I could, one, one important point that is not reflected in this slide is that um, there is a compatibility setback from a single family home to the back, we believe. And so this um, table does not reflect that comp compatibility setback. And I, um, and so I just want to, I would like to point that out. Please, next slide. Um, we did uh, have a meeting with the uh, West University Neighborhood Association on the 13th and we received their support, which we we're very pleased to have. Next slide. I think that might be the last slide. And here's my contact information. So um, to Maureen's point earlier, if anybody has any questions or anything um, that we can we can talk through as we get ready to go to commission, uh, I hope people will reach out to me directly. Um, we don't have a commission date as far as I understand right now, um, but we would expect to go to the to commission probably sometime in, in August. Um, and so as soon as we have that date, notice would go out, of course, and we'd be happy to share that information. Thank you. So now we'll be uh, <clears throat> ready for questions, either for staff or for the applicant. It will be uh, happy to answer any questions you have to the best of our ability. Uh, just to let you know that there's going to be a delay of anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds between when we speak and when you hear us. So just to let you know there might be a, a little delay in that. So with that, uh, be ready for any questions. Well, Jeff, would you like to uh, see if any of the phone callers have any questions? Hi, this is, uh, this is uh, Ryland Maxu, uh, UT Student Government Housing Policy Director. I was uh, curious, given the change from uh, office to mixed use, uh, is there an intent to uh, build residential units? I don't think I, I caught that. Sure, this is Leah Bojo. Um, there is an intent. The vision for this site would be to use that vertical mixed use overlay that we're adding to our zoning. And what the vertical mixed use overlay requires is a first floor commercial use, um, which is where Tyke would have their offices and potentially have other partner organizations that they work with in that space. And then it would have residential above. Uh, thank you. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Here's a question. Uh, it's from an anonymous viewer. Uh, the question was, I lost it. Uh, what specifically in the plans required the zoning change? So the current zoning um, does not allow us to participate in the vertical mixed use overlay that I just described for the last question. Uh, and also the current zoning limits the height to 35 feet. I believe that's the right number. Uh, and we are requesting to exceed 35 feet. So um, those are the main changes. There's also some changes to, um, to set back and things like that. Um, but the, the primary reason for the request is to um, exceed the current 
height limit and to be able to participate in the vertical mixed use overlay. There's another question here from Bart Watley said, that says, that asks regarding the height increase from 35 to 60 feet, can you show other heights along West 24th Street? I am more than happy to share an exhibit, Bart, if, if you'd like, I can forward that over to, to you all to share with your group. Um, the There are a variety of heights. I can tell you off the top of my head that the the building immediately to the west, I'm sorry, to the east of us across Leon has a 60 foot height limit, similar to what we're requesting. Um, that is, and then the, uh, and then the UNO, Overlay applies across 24th Street to the north. Um, I would have to send something your way, though, to give you more detail, and I'm happy to do that. Okay. Uh, does any of the, does the other caller have any questions? The uh, phone number ending in 7403. You're yes. muted. You need to unmute yourself with star six. If you have a question. Okay. This is uh, Bill Hastings, and I'm a, a neighbor in the area, and I was just uh, curious as to how many units uh, and how many students um, the applicant was uh, planning on uh, housing. So this is Leah. Um, I'll, I will answer that. So we are not yet at at the point in design where we have that kind of that level of information. Um, sometimes people do their design and site planning work concurrently with a zoning case. Um, but in this case, um, you know, with Tyke being the applicant as a nonprofit, um, they're taking a little bit um, more uh, risk averse position of doing kind of things one at a time. So we have not gotten far enough down in design, I believe, and Robin can add to this if she has anything additional, but we have not gotten far enough down the design path to know what kind of unit numbers we would be talking about. I agree with Leah's answer. Okay, thank you. Anyone watching on their computer or their phone have any additional questions? Do any of our phone callers have any additional questions? Well, hearing and seeing none, we'll stay on the line, stay on this uh, live event for about another five minutes uh, to see if somebody joins late and catches up in the in the in the, in the broadcast uh, if they have any questions. Actually, I have a question. Yes, and who asks for speaking? This is Mary Ingall speaking. Oh, hi, Mary. Hi. Um, I wanted to know why it's important to deal with this at this time in history. Why, uh, why is it necessary to do a plan amendment right now? Is it, uh, it sounds to me like it's, uh, one could wait uh, until circumstances get better. Uh, is this a tax issue? What, what is going on? Um, Mary, I'll, this is Leah. I'll speak a little bit to that, and then I'll let Robin elaborate. Um, I think the urgency here is that the build is the condition of the building, um, and that um, you know that the Tyke is in a position where they either have to repair, continue to repair that building, and put and put dollars into it, or figure out um, another place to go. And so. Um, you know, this is this is a moment where they know that the organization is going to continue while there are certain things that are up in the air. And so um, they are, you know, exploring what that new structure could look like. Um, and Robin, I, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, just um, every day that we wait is the potential for us to have to, you know, spend everything that we have and, and what we don't have um, to fix our building. And we have really looked and looked and looked at other places to go, and there is no place else to go, and we don't want to go anywhere else. We want to stay here. 
So we really see very little choice, but the longer we wait, I mean, we will have to sink money that is really precious to us right now, especially given um, circumstances in the world to, um, yeah, to into this building, which is throwing good money after bad. So knowing that these things take time, um, we really wanted to start to, to move this along before it all crashes down on us. So are you planning to demo the building? Um, yes, I'm looking to redevelop the site. Sorry, go ahead, Robin. No, I'd say Leah, I think Leah did a really good job explaining and um, we are non-conforming right now and there's there's no way to work with the existing structure. It is really in disrepair. I mean, our foundation is cracked. Our roof needs repair. Um, we are, I, I mean, there's just so many areas where we've got leaks constantly. Um, it just feels like a very unhealthy environment also for, for our team. And it does make it really difficult for us to with a you know a chin up to bring our international guests and visitors into this building it doesn't doesn't show austin in the way that we want to show austin would there be any additional questions actually i have another question Go ahead. Um, are you planning to flip the property after it is uh, demoed? My plan is to stay there. As I said, we have no place else that we really think is appropriate for us to go. Um, I, okay. you know, we our goal is to be on site and to actually be able to have our visitors with us. Um, and to, you know, we've had Global Austin and the World Affairs Council of Austin with us for a long time, and we think it would be wonderful to be able to have a safe and healthy place for other internationally focused nonprofits um, to either office share or, or you know, bunker, bunker in with us. Um, so we, we really want to stay and, and we think this is the perfect and most marvelous location because it's in walking distance to UT and it's easy to get around. And our biggest problem right now is one of the biggest and most costliest aspects of our programming is, is the housing. So we feel like that's the why we would like to, to have on site. Any additional questions? If not, we'll stay on here till about a little after 10 after 7, and then we will uh, sign off. And for those who um, are were unable to join tonight, we will make this um, presentation available on our speakupaustin.org slash MPA uh, website um, within a couple of days. So that means probably it'll be up and running on Monday. Or, or Friday. I forget what day of the week is sometimes.
Hello? Hi, did you have a question? Yes, I do. I'm not sure whether this should be for Leah or for someone else, but the um, the conversation has turned to office sh office sharing. Uh, who do you see as a uh, likely uh, entity that you would be sharing space with there? And would this be something you rent out or uh, something that you co-own? I'll let, this is Leah, I'll let Robin answer that question. I think the, I think the short answer is that the idea would be for like, sort of like-minded organizations to be able to work together in that space similar to the way I think they collaborate today, um, but I'll let Robin elaborate on that a little bit, if that's okay with you, Robin. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, that is exactly right. We um, really feel lucky to be able to have a, oh, am I on? Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, to be able to have two like-minded organizations with us. Um, they share, they are in our building with us and um, we'd like to keep them there. And we thought if there's space for us on the, the, the floor, the first floor, um, if there's additional office space that we could also put this out to other like-minded nonprofits. What type of nonprofits do you visualize? sharing space with you? Well, we are an international not international education focused nonprofit. And, um, you know, Global Austin is a citizen diplomacy organization. World Affairs Council is very similar to that. Something like Austin Sister Cities um, shares our type of programming. And there's many in Austin. I don't know who, who needs space, but, um, you know, we, at the, we do, you know, often um, get requests from groups like that to uh, have, a, we have a conference space and they want to host their international visitors and we're kind of an obvious place to do that. So we'd like to continue to serve as that kind of, kind of hub if we can. Uh, but Texas International would, would still be the owner of the property. You would simply be either leasing that out or allowing them to join you there at that facility. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. That's what I would envision. Yes, if we have office space, it would be for leasing. Okay. Well, if there's no additional questions, uh, Maureen's contact information is up on the screen right now. You can contact her if you have any questions regarding the future land use map. Uh, from my screen, I can't tell if there is Mark Graham's information up there as well. Yes, it is. So Mark Gramgen, like Maureen mentioned, is the uh, zoning case manager. So if you have any questions regarding the zoning case, you can contact Mr. Graham or contact Maureen if you have any questions regarding the FLUM. So if nobody has any additional questions, I guess we will wait a couple more minutes and see if <laughs> anyone uh, has any additional questions. So another minute or so, and then we'll sign up for the evening. So hearing no additional questions, I guess we will sign off and wish you all a good evening. Thank you for attending. Thank you all. Thank you.